This video is a, is different than one of my other videos because it's uh, talking to our friend Chris Mummert, who is uh, the best painter I know. He's amazing. It's like every time I see a painting that he does, I'm like, that's incredible that somebody actually can do this, <laughs> you know. And so he's an artist. And one of the things I've noticed when I'm ministering to young people, there are so many young people that are into the arts. In fact, I've I've had a word of knowledge, or maybe it's not even so much a word of knowledge as more discerning like seeing like this something comes on a person where like their posture just radiates it that they're into the arts <laughs> and so like there's so many young people in America that are into the arts you know and so it, I think it's good to to know what God is doing with the younger generation because he wants to spread his glory in many different ways and the arts is something that affects us so much more than everybody realizes. Everything we see in our society started in the mind of somebody who's an artist. And so, so uh, that's why we're talking about this. And so enjoy this interview with Chris Mummett. He's a dear friend of ours, and uh, him and his wife Deanna are awesome. When we were ministering in California recently at Church Sidkinu, we stayed at their home Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. And so God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Chris Mummett's art gallery studio <laughs> there he is that's chris moment and he's an incredible artist we're gonna to talk to him a little bit are you coming in <laughs> i am coming in <laughs> and this man does a lot of good drawing let me take my shoes off and painting it's actually painting right let's get show you a picture right here look at that isn't that amazing I didn't realize it until you pointed that out, how much uh, art is a part of everything. An artist developed the shape of this Apple display. <laughs> I mean, what? someone went ahead and designed the radiuses on these corners, you know, the shape of this thing. The you know, right. ratio, of course, was probably helped along dimensionally, you know, by the need of the you know, video display itself. But on the other hand, Art goes into, you know, the, the speakers here, just the shape of these lamps, yep. you know, everything, this, this guy, you know, some artist, some artist laid all this stuff out. Right. Before it was ever the made in, made into a lid. It, I mean, it's, it's really uh, hairdos that women have, you know, I'm just telling you, it's all, and of course, hairdressers themselves are artists and, and on and on it goes. And so a lot of this stuff is, you know, because we're immersed in it and we're, we're birthed into it, you know, and grow up around it and so forth, we take so much of it for granted. But the practical truth is it's a tremendous impact on us visually, emotionally, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's a big deal. And that's why when I was mentioning when I was teaching those kids, those high schoolers, you know, that were kind of handpicked, you know, for that museum when I did that two-day training, I was trying to tell them that it's not necessarily just about being a painter. If they want to do that, that's great. I think they probably should if they feel led that way. However, there's so many other things, you know, that they could do to change the world around them artistically. If we have the Spirit of the Most High God living within us, then we should be, we'd also talked about this, the best at yes. all this stuff, you know. I right. mean, my goodness, you know, we have, we have, we should be the most creative because we have the creative one living within us and right. so forth. And so I really think that God is calling that out within Christians in the body of Christ to go ahead and project that out into this world and show off the glory of God. There was a quite a, a shift in me some years ago where you know, I was doing a portrait of a couple, a commissioned portrait, big one. And while I was doing that, I went ahead and moved the, uh, the chair there over, this kind of over stuff for a recliner. I, anyway, moved that chair over to where it was kind of a back a bit, but looking at the portrait, okay, the canvas that I was working on. And really, I was painting that as if the Lord were sitting in the chair. 
Oh, yeah. that's good. Like he was my audience, right. you know, and really that's biblical because we're supposed to do it as unto the Lord. Right. Yes. You know, and if he's our audience, you know, when who are we mowing the grass for? Who are we doing the painting for? Right. Who are we doing all this stuff for? And that really, I think, lends itself to a, a great understanding about a spirit of excellence right. because it's like we're seeing all those cars in line at the in and out burger place. I mean, if Jesus was sitting in that car, the, right. the, Lord, the Lord was sitting in the car waiting, you know, and you're going to go ahead and serve him up a meal. Okay, fine, yay. Big, you know, how are you going to treat his time and how he is and so forth? And, right. and that spirit of excellence, I think, is, is easily understood in that way because then we can say, well, here, my, my customer's here, the person I'm doing the portrait for, you know, however this is. How are we going to treat that person if we're supposed to do it as unto the Lord? Right. Yeah. We're going to do it in the most excellent way we know how. Right. You know, some of this stuff, the way that the world is set up and knit together, you know, it really is, the, the bottom line for that is that the market will reward excellence. Right. It's automatic. Right. And, and right. so, I mean, well, I don't know about automatic, but I'm telling you, it's set up to, to operate that way. Right. <clears throat> and so if you, in fact, are operating in that spirit of excellence that we're talking about right now, if that happens, people go ahead and say, yay, you know, and, and so forth, and, and reward that. Right. And that's, that's, I think that's the way God ordained things to be. Right. And then all of a sudden you go, well, why? Why are these Christians prospering and so forth and so forth? Well, first of all, you know, we're, we're told that we're to prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers. And I don't know how it goes. But the, fo the point is, uh, it is set up for us to prosper if we pursue things with a spirit of excellence. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then uh, Jesus was a carpenter. I'm sh sure he must have been the most amazing carpenter. Yeah, right? but all he had, you know, I, I do that when I'm painting, and I think everybody, you know, has that in them. You know, if you give it all you got, if God, if God has given you a gift, and you operate in the gift that God gave you, and you give it everything you've got. I had some T-shirts made some years ago that uh, it, they're pretty simple. They just had a, a red flame you know and then in bold block lettering across the around near the flame it said the the art spirit well the reason why i did that and then they actually had a, a scriptural note beneath a much smaller and the reason why i had that made up was because the first time the spirit of the god of god the spirit of the most high god the first time it ever fell on someone ever in the word in the bible was on bezalel Right. And he was a craftsman. He was an artist. Right. And he was an artist. Mm -hmm. And so the first time that God ever fell on someone, it was to, in fact, help create right. the ability yes. to, to, to do art. Yes, God gave him skill and talent in this. For God, and all sorts for of, God to, to right. do the, the, you know, the, the uh, tent of meeting and yes. the implements and so forth and all the stuff that was within that was all fashioned under the... With the, with the help of, of the Spirit of God. And that's still going on. Right. You mm -hmm. know, if he's given us, and, and we, listen, we all have gifts. I've got people, they say, wow, that's great. And I say, well, you know, we all have gifts. Right. We've all been given, we're all fitly joined together. And so we're all meant to do things that God, in fact, special things that God, in fact, has designed us to do powerfully. Yeah. You know, and if we go ahead and pursue that, it's amazing how the doors blow open and we find it's, it's, uh, it's easier than it might be for someone else just simply because God's given that uh, to us to do. Yeah. Now that's a lot of paintbrushes right yeah. there. Yeah, that took a while to build up. So the Lord couples gifts in the natural with gifts in the spirit when we are in him, serving him. And you've got a gift to see in the spirit. And you were sharing the story of how you saw in the spirit the, the story of the lady with the cobweb tattoo. Oh yeah, that was pretty weird. So there are times when, you know, I think I think really it's it's it comes back to being used by God, and I think that so many people. What I bump into there, there's so many so many people that, you know, God wants to use us more than we want to be used. Yeah. And I think that if we just pay attention, He'll show us stuff and and where we can be used to change the world around us. And I, you know, so much of this stuff. You know, God is so efficient, and, and he's like the master chess player and so forth, where all this stuff is fit together, and it all works together, you know? Mm -hmm. And it gets back to the artistry and so on and so forth. 
it, it's really, it's almost like a tapestry, you know, that he's created for all of us, again, to be fitly joined together and operating to change the world around us. Thank you.